Good morning, New Beginning Church and our online family and friends. It is just a blessing to be here this morning. We give praise and honor to God for allowing us to meet again. We ask that you would click the share button and start a watch party with your family and friends. Have you ever thought about how awesome God is? This God we serve created the heavens and the earth and everything in it uh, from nothing. From the smallest ant to the largest elephant. He created human beings. He created plants. He created the waters. He created the wind. God even created the very air that we breathe. When we just allow our minds to think about our creator, we can't help but umber ourselves before him. He is the creator. He created you. He created me. God created all of us in his image. Men, women, boys and girls, we were all created in the image of God. So since we were created in God's image, we are called to live our lives according to God's standard. This God we serve is so merciful and so loving. He loves us so much that he, it doesn't matter how much wrong we have done. God is standing right there and all we have to do is repent, turn from our wicked ways, and God will welcome us back to him. Our scripture is from Revelation 11, 15 through 17. And it reads, Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdom of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the 24 elders who sat before God on their thrones fell down on their faces and worshiped God, saying, We give you thanks, O Lord God Almighty, the one who is and who was and who is to come, because you have taken your great power and reign. So just let your minds reflect on how awesome our God is. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with wisdom, power, and love. Our God is an awesome God. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above. Yeah. 
Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Oh, he reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Our God is an awesome God. Father God in heaven, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come. Lord, we thank you for another privilege, another honor, another opportunity to come before you. We thank you, God, for blessing us and keeping us and allow, allowing us once again to enjoy your mercies and your grace. Lord, we know that your mercies are new every morning. And we thank you, Father God, for blessing us again. We thank you, Father God, for allowing us to come to the house of prayer where your name is, Father God. We thank you, Lord, for bringing us together to hear from you one more time. Lord, we admire you, we adore you, we glorify you, we magnify you, Lord. We blow you up, we make you big before this world that other men will see you, Father God, and glorify your name, which is in heaven. Now, Lord, bless us as we come to have church this morning. Bless us, Father God, that we will glorify you in the church. We will glorify you in our spirit. We will glorify you among the people. Bless us, Father God, that every listener, every watcher, every person present, Father God, will receive from you, Father God. Father God, regardless of their circumstances, regardless of their situation, we ask you to bless now in the name of Jesus that your word will be medicine to us and be a blessing to us. And Lord, we ask you to keep the glory. All the honor and all the praise allow us to be beneficiaries of your many blessings. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray, and we ask it all. Amen. Amen. And praise the name of the Lord. We thank God again for the privilege, the honor, and this great opportunity to come before him one more time. He has blessed us to be in his presence one more time. And I'm glad about it. I'm glad that God has anointed us one more time just to be in his presence. It is a blessing to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen and Amen. thank God. We come to you again from our remote location right here in the Houston, Texas area. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for our, our visitors and your presence. We ask you to continue to follow us here on Facebook as well as here on Zoom. Thank you so much for being a part of our service on today. Thank you so much for being a part of our service on today. Let me call your attention to the book of Psalms, Psalm number 30. It's in the Old Testament. The book is Psalms, Psalm number 30. One Psalm, number 30, in the Old Testament, the book of Psalms. And we'll be reading verses 1 through 5 in your hearing here today. Psalm number 30, verses 1 through 5. You see, the book of Psalms are, are written as songs. And so there are no chapters. There are numbers. There are stanzas. There are musical notes. There are musical expressions in the book of Psalms. Psalm number 30. When you found it, you would discover these words. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up and have not let my foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you healed me. O Lord, you brought me, brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. I want to talk about favor for a lifetime. Right. Favor for a lifetime. 
During the day in which we live, we need God's favor. We live in a time where COVID-19 is running rampant. We live in a time where racial tensions is present like never before. We live in a time where unemployment has become a reality to millions all over our nation and I dare say all over the world. We live at a time where our country, the great United States of America, is more divided than ever before. Yeah. Our nation is more divided even more so than in the 60s and the 50s. Our nation is separated. Everybody have their own cause in mind. There are storms, hurricanes. Just a few days ago, six hurricanes at one time was found in the Gulf of Mexico. Mm -hmm. Wildfires has ravaged the West Coast and tremendously damaged thousands of acres and homes, thousands of homes in California alone. Mm -hmm. Earthquakes are present in diverse places, places that we had never thought we would ever see an earthquake. Mm -hmm. Eviction notices have gone out in the millions. People all over the world in which we live are being evicted because they cannot pay their bills. Mm -hmm. We ought to be ready to turn the page. We ought to be ready to be obedient to God. Sorrows are all about us. Dangers, circumstances, or dangerous circumstances. Difficult situations has plagued the world in which we live. I'm just trying to let you know we're in a bad shape. I don't mean to be one who prophesies nor give you gloom and doom. But the fact of the matter is, we must understand that nearly, if not more than 200,000 people have fallen, have died because of this dreadful disease known as the coronavirus, COVID-19. We have to get to a point in our lives where we realize that life as we once knew it will never, ever be the same. Companies are playing Russian roulette with the lives of Americans and those throughout the entire world. Everybody is trying to beat the other one to the finish line for a vaccine. And everybody is talking about my vaccine is better than the other. Yes. FDA is being pressured by leadership in the world in which we live, being pushed to get out a vaccine before November 3rd. I say to you, they're playing Russian roulette with our lives. Our nation has fallen lower than it ever had before. Such it is in the text. We find King David. King David, a leader. He finds himself in the midst of a national crisis. And in this crisis, where David find himself, over 70,000 people have died. Over 70,000 people have died because of this national crisis that is going on, and it leads right back to the leadership. Yeah, we have over 200, nearly 200,000 people who have already died. 
And the scientists have led it back to the leadership. In the text, David, David repents. David asks God for forgiveness. David tells God that he's going to give him thanksgiving. Because David realizes that it is God and God alone to whom he may turn. David says in verse number one, I will extol you. I will raise you to a lofty height. I will extol you. I will lift you for others to see. David is talking to God and he's making sure that God understands that he will lift him. He will bring him up higher. He will hold him up. God is looking for a people who will repent and then lift him up. God is looking for a people who will who will come to the conclusion that David comes to in, in, in Psalm number 30. What he says to us today, he says to us that, that I will extol God. I will lift God. I will exalt God. I will elevate God to the point where other men can see God and not me. You see, it's a tough thing. It's a tough thing when we get to a point in our lives where we have a high position mm -hmm. and we really choose to lift ourselves rather than lift God. Yes. We have to come to the point where David is. David, he, he let his arrogance get in the way. Amen. David let his ability to, to tell men where to go and tell men what to do, he let that get in his way. Too often when we get to be those who are in leadership, when we get to be over the choir, when we get to be over the ushers, when we get to be the chairman of deacons, or when we get to be the pastor or the preacher, when we get to be the Sunday school teacher or the discipleship teacher or the children's uh, teacher or the discipleship over the children teacher or the superintendent, sometime we get to a point in our lives where we get high and lifted up. David, David was at that point. David had found himself high and lifted up. David thought that he could disobey God and the nation run just like a fine-tuned machine. But David had found himself in a situation where it had become dangerous. He had found himself in some circumstances where, where it had become difficult for him. David starts this particular psalm number 30 off by praising God. That's a good place to start. Amen. If you found yourself in a fix, if you found yourself going the wrong way, if you found yourself in the midst of sin, you need to stop, look at God, look for God, search out God, and exalt God, extol God, lift God, and bless the name of God. David says in verse number one, I will extol you, O Lord, for you have lifted me up. Let me tell you, if you've been lifted, if you've been elevated, if you've been brought to a high standard, it's because God saw fit to see you there. Yes. It wasn't your degree that got you there. It wasn't your smarts that got you there. It wasn't you doing your thing that got you there. It's only God that has gotten you where you are. Too often we think we've done it on and on on our own. We talk about how we pulled ourselves up by our own bootstrap. Let me just share with you this morning. If it had not been for God, you wouldn't have had any boots, and certainly you wouldn't have had any bootstraps. That's right. He says, I will lift you, I will honor you, I will glorify you, I will praise you, and I come to you with thanksgiving. Because you have lifted me up. God has lifted you. Mm -hmm. If you got a good job, God has placed you there. If you got good benefits, God has given it to you and saw fit that you have it. If, if you have things that others don't have, it's because of the mercy of God. It's not because you planned it the right way. It wasn't because you were so smart that you put yourself in a good situation. It's because God saw fit to give you mm -hmm. mercy and give you grace. Mm -hmm. David says, and I have 
You have not, you have not, Lord, you have not allowed my foes to rejoice over me. David says, first of all, in, in verse number one, the first thing he says, I honor you because you have touched my spirit. You see, when we deal with God, it's a spiritual happening. It is a thing that takes place on the inside of us. God blesses us in spite of us. Yes. The second thing he says, you have not allowed my enemies to rejoice over me. You've not allowed my enemies to praise themselves because they've taken me down. You see, if God is going to be able, if you're going to be able to, to put your enemies to flight, you better let God put your enemies to flight for you. Amen. Because God has a way of putting the enemies to flight. He says, he says that, and you have not let my foes, my enemies, you have not let those who stand against me, you have not let them have a reason to rejoice over me. Wow. You see, your enemies want to rejoice over you. Mm. Your enemies want to brag about what they have done to you. Your enemies want to be those who have, who have already turned you out and turned you off and blockaded your blessing. But God, David says, God wouldn't allow it to happen. Amen. Let me tell you, you ought to praise God today. You ought to honor God today, regardless of what situation you find yourself in. You better honor God today because God is the one who put your enemies to flight. God is the one who blessed you yes. and enabled you to stand in the face of your enemies. Amen. David says, I recognize this very well in the midst of my tough circumstances, in, in the midst of my difficult time. God, you have blessed me. When my enemies surrounded me, God, you protected me. Is there anybody here who can testify today that God blessed you in the midst of your enemies? Yes. God bless you in the midst of difficult circumstances. God bless you in the midst of tough situation. God keeps right on blessing us Amen. because he gives us our mercy. Mercy that we don't deserve. He, he gives us peace in the midst of confusion. He blesses us in the midst of our enemies. The God that we serve is a God who is able to, to bless us in spite of us. Right. He blesses us in spite of our meanness, in, in spite of our bad decisions. He, he keeps right on blessing us in the midst of all that's going on right. around us. Right. God has not allowed his foes to rejoice over him. Verse number two, he says, he says, I will extol you, Lord. I will bless you, Lord. I will lift you, Lord. And verse number two, he says, oh, Lord, my God. He says, you're not only my Lord, you're my God. Mm -hmm. He says, oh, Lord, my God, I cry out to you and you healed me. He says, I cried out to you, and when I cry out to you, you healed me. Yes, Lord. This word here is Rapha. And, and this word Rapha means that God not only healed him, he healed him of his sickness. Not only did he heal him of his sickness, but he healed him wholly. Amen. He healed him completely. Let me just share with you, let me just share with you that when you get healed, when you bless the Lord, when you get healed to the point where he heals you completely, you are sure enough healed. Amen. And let me tell you, if you're going to be healed and you're going to have a good doctor's report, God is going to be the one that gives you a good doctor's report. Yes. You see, in verse number one, he talks about how he healed him. He healed them him spiritually. In verse number two, he says, not only did he heal me spiritually, he heals me physically. Amen. Yet God is the doctor. He is the great physician. He's the doctor who has never lost a case. He's the doctor that's never lost a patient. Amen. He is the doctor who heals us completely. Amen. You see, oftentimes when we go have surgery, it, the same problem crops up later on. That issue comes up again, and every five years, every 10 years, every 20 years, we got to go back in and get the procedure done over and over again. That's right. But the text declares, David declares, when God healed him of his sickness, he healed him completely. Amen. Let me tell you, if you need a physician, if you need somebody to heal you, 
you need God to heal you because he healed him completely. Amen. Verse number two, he says, oh, Lord, my God. He, said, he says, oh, Lord, my God, I am going gonna, gonna to bless your name. I'm going to praise you. Lord, my God, I am going to thank you because you're the self-existing God. You are Jehovah. You are the national God. You are the God that no one else can compare to. I thank you for just thank being God. He says, he says, you're my Lord. You, you're my God. You are, you, are, you are the one that I give the proper reverence to. You're the one that I give the proper name to. You're not only my God. You're not only my Lord. You're the one I respect. You are, you are God. And you're God alone. You're my magistrate. You're the one that makes a difference in my life. You, yes. You're the great God. There's no God that compares to you, for you are God, and you are God alone. Yes. Verse number three. Now, first of all, he, he thanks God for healing him spiritually. Secondly, he says he thanked God for being his security and his defense mechanism when enemies were all about me. Mm -hmm. And then in verse number two, he says, I want to thank you for healing me physically. Right. You are my Rapha God. If you've ever been sick and the yeah. doctors have given up on you and, and they sent you home and said, I don't have anything else I can do for him or her, you need to understand that he's the God who heals us completely. Yes. He is the God who heals us. Verse number three, he says, oh God, you have brought my soul up from the grave. You have kept me alive that I should not go down to the pit. Mm. Now, you need to understand that David wasn't dead and God brought him up from the grave. What he's saying is God kept me. Look at the second portion of that verse. He says, you kept me alive. Yeah. You kept me from dying. He, he says, he says, he goes back to verses one and two. He says in verse number three, first of all, you kept me alive spiritually. You kept me alive spiritually. Lord, if it had not been for you, I would have been spiritually dead. I want to tell somebody this morning, if it had not been for the Lord, spiritually you would be dead. Right. Then he says, if it had not been for the Lord keeping me in the midst of my enemies, right. the enemies would have shut me down. Then he finally says, he says, because you have blessed me physically and healed my ailment and you are right for God, you are the God who heals me completely. Now, Lord, I want to let you know that I understand. Right. You didn't allow my enemy to take me down to the grave. Right. You didn't allow my sickness to take me down to the grave. You didn't allow my spiritual walk to take me down to the grave. God, you've been merciful to me. Says, Lord, you brought my soul up. You, you healed my soul, Lord. You blessed my very self, Lord. You blessed me in a way that I couldn't bless myself. Lord, you did not let me go down to the grave. This word grave is shield or Shiloh. This word grave means that, that he didn't go down into the cavity of the earth to be buried. To, he didn't go down into the cavities of the earth because God kept him alive. Look at the second part of that verse. Verse number three, it says, For you have kept me alive, that I should not go down to the pit. Mm -hmm. You see, during those days, the enemies will put you in the pit. Yes. And they will leave you in the pit with no food, no water, until you drop dead. And when they got there and you were dead, all they had to do is cover you up. Yes. No embalming. <laughs> <laughs> no funeral, no family members. The enemies would take you down to the pit, put you in the pit, put you in the dungeon. You would die in the dungeon. And when you would die in the dungeon, they would come by and cover you up with, with, with water and cover you up with dirt. And you, if you wasn't dead, you would drown to death. You would die from hunger. You would die from a lack of food. Yes. You would die from a lack of water. He says, God, I thank you that you kept my enemies at bay. Yes. I, I thank you, Lord, that, that you didn't let me go down to the grave and stay in the grave. You delivered me from the grave. Yes. 
You brought me up from the pit. You, you, you brought me up from the pit, Lord. And for that, Lord, I thank you. So first of all, he brought him up from the murky, mari, my pit. Mm -hmm. The pit of sin. He brought him up. Then he brought him up from the handcuffs of his enemy. He brought him up. He secured him. He brought him up. He brought him up from the sickness. He, he did not let the sickness take over him. Wow. He brought him up. Let me just share with you. Let me just stop right here now and let you know. You, you may not have been diagnosed positively with COVID-19. It's not because you watch who you were around. It's not because you didn't go to the grocery store. It's not because people were, were not in your, everybody that was in your presence was not to, uh, contaminated. It's because that God watched over you. Yeah. It's because of God so fit that you did not get sick. It's not because your job been sanitized. It's not because the people that you've been around didn't have it. It's because God watched over you. I thank God for the songwriter. The songwriter says all night and all day, the Angels of the Lord keep watching, watching over me, my Lord. Amen. I'm still alive because God has kept me. It's not because I've eaten right. It's not because I get plenty of exercise. exercise. It's because God has kept me. God's mercy has kept me. In verse number four of Psalm number 30, David says to us, Sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his, mm -hmm. and give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. Yes. David says, not only in verses number three, verse number four, verses one and two, not only am I going to give thanks to the Lord, but my thanksgiving, I'm going to invite the whole congregation. I'm going to invite the whole nation. I'm going to invite all of my friends to give thanks to the Lord. Yeah. Look at what he says. He says, sing praises to the Lord, you saints of his. If you're saved, if you're born again, if you trust him, if you want to hear, you ought to sing praises unto the Lord. You ought to honor him. You ought to glorify him. What David is saying here is that not only have God rescued me from my enemies, he's rescued you too. Right. Not only has God blessed me in the midst of my sickness, he made me whole. He's done it for you also. Right. Not only has God shut my enemies down, he shut your enemies down for you too. God has blessed us and because God continues to bless us, that's why we ought to thank him. Yes. We ought to praise him. We ought to glorify him. We ought to magnify him. And when David says we ought to praise him and sing praises unto the name, he doesn't ask the sinners to sing praises. He oh. said, all you his people. He, he says, all of you his saints. You ought to sing praises to the magnificent Amen. name Amen. of the Lord. The problem today is we got saints that won't sing praises unto him. Oh. We got saints that God has blessed, saints that God has done great thing on, things on their behalf, and they're too mean, they're too stingy to lift their hands, they're too cool to praise the Lord. David says, I am the king, I am the one who was arrogant, but God has rescued me, and because God has rescued me, I'm not embarrassed, I'm not shy nor shame, but I'm going to sing praises to the Lord, and you saints, y'all ought to sing praises praises unto Amen. him also. Amen. He says, sing praise to the Lord, you saints of his. He says, not the saints of the devil, That's right. but the saints of God. <laughs> the saints of God ought to honor their God. The saints of God ought to sing praises unto the Lord. You ought to wake up singing unto him. You, you ought to lay down singing up to him, unto him. You ought to be singing unto him all day long because the Lord has blessed you. Yes. And he says, give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. <laughs> he said, you ought to give thanks. You ought to give thanks. You ought to give thanks at the remembrance 
of his name. Every time I think of the name of God, I ought to thank him. I ought to give thanks unto him. Every time I T-H-I-N-K, I ought to T-H-A-N-K. Every time I think about the name of God, I don't have to think about who he is. I don't have to think about what he's done. If I just think about the name of Jehovah God, if I have to think about the name of the self-existing God, I ought to thank him every time I think about him. He says, give thanks at the remembrance of his holy name. There's none like him. There's no God like our God. There's no king like our king. That's right. He is Jehovah God. Then finally, in verse number five, it gives us a couple reasons <laughs> why we ought to sing thanks while we ought to sing praises, while we ought to engage in thanksgiving unto the Lord. And he says, because his favor exists for a lifestyle, lifetime. His favor, God's favor, it doesn't just show up and walk out. God's favor exists from a lifetime, for a whole lifetime. He has a style about him like no other God. He has, a, he has a personality like none other God. It says, for his anger is for a moment. His favor is for life. Weeping endures for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Wow. Look at what he says. Look at what he says. He says, God's anger is but for a moment. See, David, David admits, David, David admits right here, he admits that God has a right to be upset with him because the whole nation has been ter in turmoil because of the king. The whole nation have tough circumstances because of the king. The whole nation is in a bad way because of the leader. Let me tell you today, much of what we're going through today is because of the leader that's in the White House. Come on, talk to me this morning. We need to understand that whenever you're in leadership, you got to take God with you. Whenever you're in leadership, we ought to select people that are of God. Whenever you get a chance. To be in leadership, don't be too arrogant to humble yourself before the Lord. Whenever you get a chance to be in leadership, don't be so stuck on you until you think everybody got to thank you for doing your job. <laughs> Whenever you're in leadership, don't get to a point where if they don't thank me, then I'm going to cut them off. <laughs> when you're in leadership, don't defund this state and, and elevate the funding in another state because you can and because you think you can. Let me just share with you, there's a God that sits in heaven. He sits high and he looks low. In every situation we put ourselves in, God is watching it and God is taking a note of it. God is not sleep, America. God is not sleep in the world. God is still in control. He's still on the throne. We better watch it when we get in leadership. Because the same people that you meet on your way up, you're going to meet those same people on your way down. And let me just share with you, don't get excited, don't get disappointed in your leadership, simply because the same leaders that are doing you wrong now, the same people who see those leaders doing us wrong now are going to be the same people that see that leader take a great fall. Hmm. David came to himself. David began to honor God. Let me just share with you. And every preacher in this world ought to be telling leadership, you better turn back to God. You better obey God. You better walk with God. It doesn't matter how far you have gone. I know that sin will take you farther than you want to go. Sin will make you stay longer than you want to stay. And sin will cost you more than you can afford to pay. Let me tell you, you better turn back to God and trust in him. America, it's time for us to turn back to God. It's time for us to walk back with God. It's time for us to depend on God. It's time for us to walk with God in such a way that we repent of our sin. David had it right. David had it right. He decided to, that I'm going to repent of my sins. 
He decided that I am going to give it up for the Lord. David decided that all the arrogance that I used to have is no more. I humble myself before you, Lord. I do not come boldly before you. I humble myself before you, Lord. Yes. Honoring you. He says, I messed up. I've fallen short. I missed the mark. I have sinned before God. And I am no more worthy to be called his son. But he repented of it. And he letting the people know that the anger of the Lord lasts for a moment. Amen. He says, for his anger is but for a moment. The anger of the Lord lasts just for a moment. <laughs> Let me tell you, it may, it may seem like God has been angry at us for years and years. But I want to tell you God's anger only last for a moment. I'm telling you today, God's anger only lasts for us with us for a moment. Now the question becomes, how long is that moment? Let me just share with you. When God is angry with us, we begin to see the wrath of God. Yes, he's a good God. Yes, he's a merciful God. Yes, he's a God that give us grace, mercy, and favor. But God, when God gets angry, the whole world knows it. But we walk away from God. When we turn our backs on God, when we don't trust in God, it, don't, it, it is not a political affair. When we put politics over godliness, God gets angry. When we put one race over another race, God is upset. <laughs> when we put what we desire over what God desires, God is upset and God's anger is turned toward us. <laughs> when we put the creature Above the creator, God gets angry with us. The psalmist says God's anger because God loves us, because God blesses us, because we are God's prized possession. His anger lasts just for a moment. His anger lasts just for a moment. It says to us we ought to praise him. We ought to honor him. We ought to exalt him. We ought to lift him. Because his anger, his anger, God's anger lasts just for a moment. This word anger means that God has a stench in his nostrils. And, mm -hmm. and he has caused us suffering because we have put a nasty smell, a stench in God's nostrils. And whenever we walk away from God, what we're doing is we're setting up a nasty fragrance in the presence of God, and it has landed in his nostrils. I stopped by here to tell you today that the system that is before us, the political system, has a stench in God's nostril. I want to tell you in the school system, they push God out, and there's a stench in God's nostril. I want to tell you that in our neighborhoods, we do not honor God, and there's a stench in God's nostril, and God is having a hard time breathing because we have put a stench in his nostrils. Yes. That's why David says praise him because praise is like a sweet smelling savor yes. that goes before the nostrils of God and we know when we praise him we telling God, God we are unworthy and you are worthy. Yes. You are worthy God of all the honor, mm -hmm. all the praise and all the glory. And because he's God his anger does not endure. His anger doesn't last for a long time. His, his anger, even though the smell in his nostrils are, are nasty, stinking, and, and it is not good for God, neither is it good for us. Even though we messed up, God's anger only lasts for a moment. Then he says, but his favor. <laughs> his favor endureth for a lifetime. I'm so glad that God has given us favor. This word favor means God's delight. You see how you see how you're able to turn it off and on? God's anger exists for a moment, but God's favor, his delight, his, his desire, his favor, his pleasure, God's will, God, what God would do, God's acceptance of us lasts for a lifetime. Yes. Lasts for a lifetime. It's, it, it's, it's there 
and it lasts for life. Thank God for favor for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. I thank God that I got God's favor for a lifetime. I have God's favor, and it will last for a lifetime. I have the pleasure of God. I have the acceptance of God, and it will last for a lifetime. And then I, I close today with this final part of this verse number five. It says weeping. Mm -hmm. King James would say it like this. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. Amen. This word weeping means an overflowing drizzling, a dripping. It is like a faucet that has lost its old ring. It's a constant dripping. It, it, this weeping is, is a constant dripping. It's, it's sorrow. It, it, is, it is soreness. It, it is weeping. It is the weeping that comes before us in the midst of our problems. This weeping endures for a night. Amen. It is the analogy. It is the implication when we talk about weeping and doing for a night. It is the implication of a visitor coming over to your house and that visitor is staying just for a night. This visitor will spend just 24 hours or less at your house. Let me tell you, when, when weeping is looked upon in this text, it is saying it is a visitor that comes and visits you. They are not coming to stay with you. They are not coming to, to, to homestay with you. They are coming to visit you for a night. I stopped by to give you some good news today to let Amen. you know that this weeping endures for a night. Amen. It only endures for 24 hours. I know some people are wondering, how long is this night? I've been in this for several years. I've been in this for over, over 10 years. How long is the night? I just want to let you know today that even though you've been in it for a long time, it's only a night in God's sight. Amen. It's weeping. It's like a, like a guest that comes over and visits, and he stays one night, and that guest leaves and goes on to somewhere else. Let me tell you, it's, it is the joy that comes in the morning. It is the favor of God that comes in the morning that hang around for a long time. Let me tell you, even though this weeping endures for a night, it's still there. It lingers sometime. It hangs in there sometime. I was looking at some, some products this morning, and I was looking at them, and I was looking at the ingredients in them. And when I look at the ingredients in the product, every last one of them had water in it. You can't see the water, but it's in there. You cannot tell that it's water. Water is in there. Even if it's a jail, it got water in it. It's in there. Let me share with you today. If you do not walk with the Lord, the weeping will stay with you for a longer period of time. The weeping will stay there even more than a night. But thank God for the final part of verse number five. In verse number five, the final part says this, but joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. I'm telling you excitement comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. I'm telling you when joy shows up, there there's rejoicing there. There's proclamation there. There's gladness there. There's no more crying there. There's shouting there. There's triumph there. Well, joy comes in the morning. You see, joy is not intimidated. Joy is not determined by what is happening. You see, you are happy based on what is happening. But joy got joy. Joy has joy on the inside of us. And when we have joy on the inside, it elevates to the outside because joy stays there. Amen. Joy favor and joy exists for a lifetime. Mm. Somebody's walking around today. The Their lives are miserable. They have no joy based on the decisions that you've made. I say to you as David would say this morning, come on, repent of the Lord. Come on, repent of your sins. Come on and walk with the Lord and praise him, oh you saints. Praise the Lord for what he has done and then give thanksgiving unto him for what he has already done for you. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We need to get to a point where we realize that weeping may endure for a season. Weeping endures for a moment. Sorrow is still around, but it can't endure because joy comes in the morning. And when joy comes in the morning, joy hangs around. When favor comes, favor sticks with us for a lifetime. I thank God for Jesus. <laughs> he has made a way out of no way. I thank God for Jesus, for he has made joy prevalent in my life. I thank God for Jesus because he has made it where we can be able to rejoice in the Lord. 
We, pro we have proclamation in the Lord. We ought to shout unto you, Lord. Well, preacher, you look like you're so mild-mannered when you're just walking around. But the moment you get to talking about the Lord, you get all excited when you talk about him. It's because it's joy deep down on the inside. It's joy that elevates on the outside. It's joy that's a demonstration on the outside. I got joy. I got peace. I got love. I got power because God has made a way out of no way. Yes. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He did it over 2,000 years ago. Yes. Jesus the Christ, joy himself, got off in a place called Bethlehem of Judea. Joy himself yes. was born of a virgin called Mary. Joy himself was born to a daddy called Joseph. Joy himself was the son of God. He is the only begotten son of God, the only unique son of God. Thank God for joy. He got off in this place called Judea. Yes, he did in a place called Bethlehem. They laid joy in a manger. They wrapped him in grave clothes. But I ain't that joy. That joy on the inside, that joy that was born over 2,000 years ago, the joy that was born and laid in a manger. Yes. He walked these mundane shores. Joy did it. Joy gave sight to the blind. Joy picked men up that, was, that were crippled. Joy was able to bless us real good. Thank God for joy. Joy, his name is Jesus. Yes. His name is Jesus. Joy took a tree. He marched up Calvary's hill. He died between two thieves. Thank God for joy. Hallelujah to the Lamb. They killed him. Mean men murdered him. They took him off the cross, laid him in a bar tomb. Hallelujah to the Lamb. They laid him in a barber tomb. It was a barber tomb because it didn't need it too long. Out of that third day morning, my joy got up with all power yes. in heaven and earth in his hand. And he makes a way out of no way. Yes. That same joy, Jesus himself, he makes a way out of no way. Yes. In him I live. In him I move. In him I have my being. Yes. If you're listening to us today, you need joy. You need Jesus. He can do it every time. The door of the church is open. The invitation is extended. You need to come to Jesus. Just as you are. Don't try to wait till you get it right. I tried that. I couldn't get it right. But Jesus, the great joy maker, Help me to get it right. You got to trust him. You got to walk with him. His name is Jesus. The conquering king of Calvary. If you've never received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, this is your moment. This is your opportunity. The door of the church is open. Amen. Will you come to Jesus? Don't try to get it right. You'll never get it right. Come to Jesus just as you are. Really wounded and sad. That he will make a resting place. And he will make you glad. Jesus the Christ. Is joy in the morning. Joy in the noonday. And joy in the evening. Jesus the Christ is joy at midnight, his name is Jesus. You got to trust him, believe in him, and he can bless you. If you've never received him, this is your moment where you can just bow your head today and invite Jesus into your life as your personal savior. The door is open. The invitation is extended. You can join this family of faith by just bowing your head and repeating after me. If you want to know Jesus, would you join me in believing the story that Jesus died for your sins? He was buried in a borrowed tomb and he rose from the dead. Will you join me and just repeat after me? Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. 
I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. We believe if you prayed that prayer that you are now born again. And you're on your way to heaven when you die. And if you're here today and you don't have a church home, I recommend the New Beginning Church. You can join even on the air. Inbox me and let me know that you want to join and be a partner with the New Beginning Church. If you don't have a church home, you need one. Foxes have holes. Birds of the air have nests. Those are their homes. Every person needs a church home. I recommend the New Beginning Church. But Jesus is the center of attention. And he's the main attraction. Inbox me and let me know that you need a home. A church home. We'll be glad to, to celebrate your coming. And to bless God's name for you. If you need prayer, inbox me and let me know you need prayer. And we'll be praying with you and praying for you. We'll be lifting your name before the Lord. If you've joined today this family of faith by receiving Christ as your Savior, inbox me and let me know that you've received Christ and we'll be glad to celebrate with you. As the angel celebrates in heaven, we want to celebrate with you and what God has done for you on planet Earth as he prepared you for heaven. Welcome to the family of faith. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you to our visitors for being a part of our service on today. Amen. It is now offering time. It is now time to join in in giving offering unto the Lord. It's time to give offerings unto the Lord. It is offering time. It's time to give unto the Lord Jesus Christ. It is offering time. And you can give your offering today by three different means. You can give by cash app. The cash tag is dollar sign NBC Souls. Dollar sign NBC Souls. You can give by way of cash app. Cash tag NBC Souls. Cash tag NBC Souls. Or you can give by Zelle. Our Zelle email account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. The idea is if we lift Jesus, he will draw all men unto himself. Or you can mail your offering in. To P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. New Beginning Church, P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. 77459. 77459. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. 77459. I want to thank those of you who've been joining us for Sunday School. Uh, for our lessons every Sunday in Sunday school at 9 a.m., thank you so much for joining us. Please continue to join us for Sunday school at 9 a.m. every Sunday for a powerful demonstration of teaching God's Word. Brother Whitlock and Brother Miles has, have, have been doing an excellent job of teaching the Word of God. So follow us at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning for Sunday school. Also, thank you for joining us for this service. We're here every Sunday at these same stations at 10.45 a.m. for worship service every Sunday, 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. And continue to join us on Wednesday nights at 7.20 p.m., 7.20 p.m., 7.20 p.m. for our Bible study. Thank you so much for joining us. 
Our youth and our young people are having Bible study in Sunday school, if you will, <clears throat> by way of cahoots. They're, they're having Sunday school by way of cahoot. If you have a child that's not in Sunday school because of the pandemic, let us know so we can uh, get him or her involved in Sunday school. Kahoot is a, is a competition type of, of app that you can go in and have the same Sunday school lesson as the adults, but children do it in a very creative way. So inbox me and let me know if you have a child or a youth that needs to be in Sunday school. I'll connect you with those people who are over that area, and we'll be glad to welcome you, and you don't have to be be a member of the New Beginning Church to participate, as you don't have to be a member of the New Beginning Church to participate in any of our activities. Thank you so much. We just want to get the word of God out that people's lives will be changed. This Tuesday, this Tuesday, we are having our Zoom prayer meeting. This Tuesday, we're having our Zoom prayer meeting this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Uh, by way of Zoom. Please join us by way of Zoom. And the password as well as the Zoom account um, is on. Let me put it back up for you, the password and the Zoom account for you to join us by way of, of Zoom. You can join us for our prayer time. During this prayer time, we do discuss the direction of the church and when we're looking to get back in and how safe it is. And we are following the science. We are, we are following the science. We are following the science to make sure that everybody migrate back into the church in a good way. So this is a Zoom account before you. Um, come on in and, and have prayer with us and talk about the direction of the New Beginning Church and how God is blessing us, how God is is making a difference in our lives and how God is, is doing great things through the New Beginning Church. <clears throat> Please remember to vote, and if you're not registered, hurry up and get registered to vote. Uh, we have before us one of the greatest times in voting history. Every person needs to vote in this election. I don't know how you're gonna do it, but you need to vote. Every person needs to vote Every person needs to vote in this election. Please, ma'am, please, sir. Some people, some people are waiting for November 3rd to vote. Some, some people have already begun to vote in some states. My date for voting is October the 13th. I look forward to October the 13th. I'm looking forward to being in the number to vote October the 13th in early voting. I'm looking forward to vote. I understand real well that there is, there is a time to talk and there's a time to vote. Those of you who've been in the middle of the protests, Dr. Al Sharpton says, if you're protesting, if you're marching and you do not vote, <laughs> you're just talking loud and saying nothing. I don't want to be guilty of talking loud and saying nothing. We need to vote. Please uh, inbox us and let us know if you need prayer. We'll be praying with you and praying for you. Look forward to hearing from you and seeing you on Tuesday and Wednesday. And even next Sunday, we're looking forward to, to interacting with you. We're trying everything we can to keep everybody connected during this season. We're trying to get keep everybody connected and, and that we all can grow in the spirit together, the spirit of Jesus Christ. Amen. We at the New, New Beginning Church, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus says, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John chapter 12, verse 32. Let us go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you now and we bless your name. We thank you for your mercy and your grace. We thank you for another privilege, another chance another opportunity to look into your word. We thank you for what you have revealed. We thank you for all that you're doing. Now, Lord, we ask you to bless us this week. Bless us, Father God, that we will walk with you. Bless us, Lord, that we will humble ourselves as David has done. Bless us, Lord, that regardless of our position, we know that you're the one that is high and lifted up. Bless us, Lord, to repent. 
Bless us to turn away from our sins. And bless us, Lord, that we will call on you, God. And as we cry out to you, you will heal us spiritually. You will heal us physically. And that you will defeat us, defeat our enemies, and defeat us within ourselves. We, we depend on you, Lord. We love you. And we know that weeping endures just for a night. But favor and joy is from now on. We thank you now. We ask you to lead us, guide us, direct us, and protect us. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank God. Again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for being a part of our service. God bless you and God keep you is our prayer.